without using a calculator. Okay, guys, so just chuck your calculators away. No, that was a joke. Guys, when they say without a calculator, you can still use a calculator just to give you like a bit of help. Um, I'm not saying you, you need a calculator for this one, but don't be too extreme when they say without using a calculator. Like, you know, when you're sitting an exam and it says without using a calculator, and then there's that like old Tani who's walking down the, the aisle and she's coming towards your table. Trust me, those people that they get from the external, they don't even know what you're busy writing about. Like, they couldn't care less. They, non, they are not looking at your question and says, ooh, look, calculator, and look, he's using a calculator. Ooh, we're gonna report him. No, they're not looking at that type of stuff at all, okay? Um, you can use your calculator, but the way that you present your answer, that's where they're gonna be able to check. Were you using a calculator, okay? So don't freak out when they say this. Don't like put your calculator under your desk or something, <laughs> okay? Okay, so you guys probably don't do that anyways. Maybe I was the only one who had that feeling when I was a student, I don't know. Anyways, let's, let's move on. So without using a calculator, calculate the value of this. Okay, so whenever, 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 whenever you get a question that is like two to the 1002, uh, well, not an equal sign, plus two to the 1000 and, um, I know this says six, but I'm gonna just change it up. There we go, 2008. Okay, whenever you get something like this in mathematics, I want you to do this. Take out a common factor. The common factor will always be um, the lowest one, okay? The lowest one. And then you open up a bracket. And then what would you be left with over here? Well, there's nothing there, so you'd be left with a one. And then here you'd be left with two to the power of six. Why is it a six, some of you may be asking. Well, if you had to multiply these two together, by the way, this is just an example that I'm busy showing you. Some of you are gonna look at this and be like, um, 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 um it's meant to be a six over there, sir. I know, I'm just doing an example quickly. Um, so if you did have to multiply these two together, let's say we did multiply those two together, and then you just stick to exponent rules, for example, a to the what, 10 times a to the three, many of you would be comfortable by saying that this is becoming a to the 13, because you add. So if you had to then say that this would become two to the 1008. Okay, you see? So that's what you would do over there, okay? So yeah, get into the habit, because you will get these types of questions they like to ask them. So we're gonna go do the same type of technique, and let's see if it works out. So we're gonna open up a square root, and we're gonna take out a two to the 1002 as a common factor at the top part. I don't care what's happening at the bottom right now. Um, and so you're gonna be left with one plus two to the power of uh, four, okay? Um, right, now at the bottom, you're gonna be left with 17, and I have no idea what we're gonna do at the bottom. Don't worry, it's all gonna work out. Check this out. If you know that two to the four is 16, and 16 plus one is 17. Ooh, and there's a 17 at the bottom. So what happens is we can just do this. We can then say that that becomes a 17. At the bottom, we also have a 17. Okay, so these 17s can cancel. And so you're left with a square root of two to the 1002 at the top and two to the 998 at the bottom. Now, don't just be like, oh, brew, cancel out. No, that's not the way it works, remember? If you have, you always have to think about this. If you have like a to the seven and at the bottom you've got like a to the four, you don't cancel out the a's. What do you do? You say a, see the a stays there and then you subtract and then you get seven minus four, which is three. But notice that the A is still there. But suddenly when we have numbers, students just wanna go cancel it out. And remember, when I'm telling you guys the things you're doing wrong, it's because I did it when I was a student <laughs> many times. And then also from teaching lots of students, I've, I've, you know, I see all of these things. Okay, so, but it was mostly because of my mistakes when I was a student. I was such a bad student and like, I've, I've told the story many times, but like in grade nine and 10, um, I was like, I remember in June, no, not June. Uh, no, it was, it was the June exams of grade nine. I got like 21% for my, for my exam. And I remember at the end of grade nine, driving to go fetch my report, I was with my mom, and I was in the car crying. My mom had to, I think my mom even had to, no, I think I did go in um, to go get my report, but I was cr like crying in the car, guys, because I honestly thought I had failed. And then I opened my report and it said, Kevin has been promoted to grade 10, and I think I got like 40% for maths or something. And I still went and did pure maths, crazy guy. Um, 
but yeah, so so I was not the best student in the earlier grades, like grade nine, grade ten. Um, by some miraculous reason, in grade eleven, uh, it was like June of grade eleven, um, or like yeah, somewhere around there. I just had some weird thing happen to my life where I just decided I'm going to become a beast student, and I just started studying like every single day, and I even dropped computer applications technology, and I took physical sciences. Like, listen to that carefully. In so it was the end of term two, okay? So I only started physical sciences in the term, the beginning of term three of grade 11. Did you hear that? And here I am teaching maths and science. So my life just changed. I just decided I'm done with this lazy way of living that, I'm, that I've been busy living. And I just started studying like a beast. And my whole life changed. Like after, you know, after high school, um, I went to university, did four years of engineering, um, and then after that, I just started teaching students, and boom, here we are. So anything's possible. I just I decided to stop being lazy. Um, I'm not saying you lazy if you're struggling. I just know that I was lazy. Um, I wasn't lazy necessarily. Like I was, I wanted to do well, but I was a bit lost. And then I just decided, what happens if you take a human being? And that human being just decides to put all of his attention onto one thing, and that's academics. What would happen? And the proof's in the pudding. I literally transformed my entire life, and all my marks improved. And at the end of matric, I got 91%. And remember, I only started physical sciences, grade 11, term 3. So I had to catch up all of grade 10. The psychologists at the school were very unhappy with me. They were like, dude, you are literally going to fail all of your subjects. It is impossible to catch up all of this work. And I was like, hush, hush, hush. I've got a new energy and I'm going to do this. And I did it. So yeah, if you want to change your life around, just make that decision to just cut out all the bullshit and literally just stop wasting time on nonsense. Put all of your energy into your academics. I'm not saying become like antisocial and drop all of your friends. I mean, if you want to do that, that's okay. But I'm not saying that that's what I did. I didn't like just like not have any friends. I tried to at least do some social things on the weekend. But during the week, I was like a beast mode. I was just like, and I was doing a lot of exercise as well. So it would be exercise once a day and then study like crazy. Yeah. Okay. So um, I understand the 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 struggles of a mathematics and science student, okay? I was really average um, until I changed my life around and that was the best thing I ever did. Okay, so um, what happens here is that we, um, we stick to the basics of mathematics here and we don't cancel these twos out. We leave it as a two, okay? And then we subtract because that's what we would have done over here. And so you end up with two to the power of four. Now, what is two to the power of four? It's 16. What is the square root of 16? It is four. So the answer is four.